Who do people say I am? Who do people say I am? Well, certainly over the last several weeks, we recognize that Jesus' ministry has been busy. He has fed 5,000 people. There's a story about him feeding 4,000 people. He, he heals the sick. He teaches in all kinds of different parables. He adds to the depth and the breadth of the law by challenging people's understanding of it, like uh, picking grain, wheat, on a Sabbath day or healing someone on that very day. But Jesus asks the question of his disciples. We've done a lot, to be sure. But who do the people say I am? And of course the disciples said, well, you're John the Baptist, uh, they say Elijah, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Hosea, Amos, Obadiah, Micah, they say all the different prophets, that you are the pro one of those prophets. And Jesus thinks about it. He says, well, that's not bad company. I mean, these prophets are pretty good. But who do you say I am? And of course, Peter answers. You are the Messiah. You are the Mashiach. You are the one who will save us. Well, Jesus thinks about it for a minute. He says, well, Peter, you're right. You have heard this from somewhere. It's not on earth that you heard it, but you heard it from my Father in heaven. And uh, I'll confirm that your hearing is correct. But here's the thing. He... He wants his disciples, for the time being, to really focus on the work at hand, to share the peace, the great shalom, to take care of the people that they are taking care of, to feed and clothe, to comfort and to challenge people as they need to be challenged. It's important that for Jesus, these disciples get this stuff right. And the other thing is that while Peter says Jesus is the Messiah, he's not convinced that either Peter or the other disciples necessarily understand what that means. At this point in Jesus' ministry, for sure, the disciples would be thinking, well, as a Messiah, you are going to overthrow Rome. That's what a good Messiah would do in this situation. We are oppressed. We don't have uh, our, you know, the whole country is a mess. And uh, of course, uh, as Messiah, you would overthrow Rome. And of course, we recognize that this creates a little bit of tension and a, a new way of seeing what Messiah means as the faith story unfolds over time. But, at this point, Jesus does not want them to breathe a word. One, because they don't know what they're talking about. And two, he has a little more work to do in general. But he hopes that by doing the peace over an extended period of time, they will begin to understand and distinguish between what is kingdom and what is the world. Two different things that do converge all the time. But he needs these disciples to build the muscle memory that makes it clear that what we do as a follower of Jesus is to care for those who need to be cared for, to speak out against injustice, to begin to discern the difference between the kingdom and the world, and to understand that the Messiah, the Messiah that is there who will continue to come is the Messiah of the kingdom. The kingdom. The kingdom is, rightfully understood, the practice of God's love with all people throughout the world. 
the world. Well, that's something else. And Jesus understands that he's living in the world. The disciples are impacted by the world. You wake up in the, in the daytime, you, 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 the world's greeting you right there. But the challenge is to put one's energy and time into this kingdom. That, by the way, would make the world a much better place. Now, if Jesus were alive today, and of course, we know that he is here, Right? Wherever two or more are gathered in my name, I am present, right? I, he is present in the, in, in, the, in the elements of communion, right? We recognize Jesus is risen. He's risen indeed. He's risen every day of the year. 365 days of the year, he is risen. So we understand Jesus is always with us. But if he asked us the question, if he asked you the question, who do you say I am, what would the answer be and what would Jesus' response to our answer be? It would create probably some sort of a dialogue and there might be a variety of different answers he would likely hear. As I was driving to Laurel Park yesterday with my son Ryan, our son, Ryan, uh, I often talk to him about sermons that I'm doing and this and that, and uh, I asked Ryan the question, I said, uh, who do you say Jesus is? And Ryan said, well, he's my teacher. I said, okay, anything more? What, is, what does he teach you? He, he teaches me to pick up my cross and follow him. All right, that's an answer. What if uh, someone said to Jesus, Master, Master, I ask you not to listen to what I say. I ask you to watch. Do. What would Jesus say about that? My suspicion is he would like the answer. There's an implication here that I am following you, Jesus, and yeah, I'm going to make mistakes, and I know I'm going to fall, and I know you're going to forgive me, but doggone it, I'm going out there and giving it my best, Master. That's not a bad answer. Not a bad answer. What if you said, Jesus, you are my personal Lord and Savior? Okay. What would he say? He might ask, what does that mean? How does that work? He might ask, do you share the peace? What, how, how does your life look? I'm, I'm curious about that. Are you willing to pick up your cross and follow me? These are questions, we'll talk. Maybe we say, I will follow you, Jesus. I will follow you to the ends of time. And Jesus says, well, you know, that's great. I go to everybody. I go to everybody throughout the world. I'm everywhere. I'm standing with all people. All people. And I know you can't be everywhere at once, but I invite you to uh, not judge too much. You might say, there's evil in this world that just is too dangerous to, to deal with. And Jesus would say, well, there's evil everywhere. That's part of what we call fighting the good fight of faith. 
We all struggle with it. But what you're trying to say, Jesus might say, is when you put the focus on evil in the world and try to create this speed bump of sharing God's love with the world, what you're really doing is avoiding what needs to be done. There's always an excuse. He might ask the question, could it be that evil is the absence of peace when it is desperately needed? Where am I? Where are you? He might say to stay silent when you see an injustice might be evidence of evil or to turn a blind eye on the truth. The truth will set you free. You know, to believe in Jesus is to understand that faith is a power that can be applied to all matter of life. It's not something, it's everything. Faith can be applied in a variety of different ways. We unpack the shalom all the time. There's different dimensions of God's love that can be applied. And for those who uh, are good Lutherans, we understand that when thinking about a ministry to all of creation, that means all, Luther would agree. In, in, in his words about vocation. There's nothing that you can or can't do that can't bring your faith into the story. We're always invited to take the yoke of Christ with us in everything we do. To be there. To take Christ with us to allow ourselves to be transformed, to imagine how we each might be able to experience that love. Now, the good news is when you believe and live as such, when you believe and live as such, you become the good news. The good news for others. Your hope, the hope of Christ, will shine through you and touch others. Sometimes and often in ways none of us necessarily understand. Even better news, I suppose, is that when you fail, when you fall, You live forgiven. Christ is there. God loves you. We make mistakes. God is there to pick us up. Don't be afraid, says Jesus, to make mistakes. Here's the thing. You've got an insurance policy on all this stuff. Get out there and do it. Don't be afraid. I've got you covered. And that's pretty good. And finally, just to remember that we are sinners saved by grace through faith in Christ. To remember, this is our day. This is our time. This is another generation's recollection of this time. And we all have the opportunity to make this life better and to build a bridge of greater peace for all. Amen.